the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. Welcome back to the Sports Renegades here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stuffridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. And last time we were talking about the NBA Finals, and now we're going to kind of get more into what's happened, some of the dirty actions that have been going on on the court uh, in the NBA playoffs. And it only starts with Draymond Green kicking Steven Adams in a place that he sh- should not be kicking him. Well, and the thing is, not only did it happen once, it happened twice in the same And series. what kind of punishment was handed down? None. Nothing. And he should have been suspended for that next game. I, I think that happened in 4 or 5. In game 4 or 5, he should have been suspended for game 5. I think it happened in game 4. He should have been suspended in game 5 in Golden State, which uh, Golden State ended up winning that game. Um, but, uh, that was also very competitive up to, up until the end. Um, but yeah, uh, he should have been suspended. And, you know, for me, the main reason why is because Dante Jones a day earlier got suspended for doing nothing. He like hit Bismack Biombo in the arm or something. And, you know, it wasn't as bad as what Draymond Green did. And he did not get suspended. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, he did get suspended, but Draymond Green did not get suspended for, for, uh, for uh, hurting Steven Adams uh, twice in the same series. So I don't know what was going on there. I think it's because the NBA wanted it to be as competitive as possible. They don't want to suspend such a big NBA figure like Draymond Green, a fan favorite, somebody who a lot of people like. Uh, Nobody knows who Dante Jones is, so they didn't have a problem suspending him. I think that's what the issue was. Yeah, I mean, and then when something like that happens, you can't help uh, other than to wonder... If the if the NBA just didn't want to suspend him because they didn't want to risk Golden State getting knocked out, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I think uh, you know, God forbid, if Golden State gets knocked out, uh, and it's because they didn't have an inside presence with Draymond Green, uh oh, you know, people would be freaking out. So I think that's uh, sort of what happened. And I mean, I'm not a Golden State hater per se. I I mean, it may sound like I am, but I'm really not. Um, you know, I I just think he should have been suspended. And, I mean, uh, like he, he the fact that he been. wasn't, yeah, and the fact that he wasn't just shows that the NBA wants, you know, they they want everybody playing, uh, especially when it's Golden State. You know, they're they're trying to repeat. The NBA is more than okay with that happening. So, uh, I I just think uh, I just think that's sort of the way it goes. Um, you know, they're they're getting preferential treatment because they're the best team in the NBA. They won the. Uh, regular season at 73 and 9 no team has done that so it's uh i i think that's what it is and uh you know the fact that people never point it out like nobody ever points it out everyone's just you know golden state this golden state that but nobody ever talks about anything that happens wrong or you know anything that i find uh you know kind of strange no one ever talks about it no, and then another thing that kind of has been bugging me is just the, just the erroneous flops that this post. There's just been some yeah. flops that have been so bad that I the one that, that LeBron had against when Toronto his own, when his own <laughs> was it Tristan Thompson? Had? Yeah, it was his own teammate that pushed him, and he didn't even push him hard. And he LeBron, like, he, he feels barely... like he got punched in the face. Like, like no, you didn't get punched in the face. I, I I mean, it, the only way to stop flopping at this point is to start suspending guys. And I, if I was NBA commissioner, I'd be like, the, that's what all the game is. Like, even the NBA 2K game has incorporated flopping in it. There's a special button to press to flop in that game. <laughs> that's how that's how pathetic it's gotten. And uh, You need to start suspending guys. Not only the flops, but the blown calls. I mean, there, there have been some awful calls in this NBA playoffs, especially, and most importantly, I think that was game one or two in San Antonio with the Spurs and Thunder. Uh, and, I mean, the, the way that the Spurs ended up losing that game was total BS. When, uh, I think it was... Um, was that the, on the inbound when, like... Yeah, it was the inbound when the guy, I forget which Thunder player it was, but he elbowed uh, Manu Ginobili. Uh, he elbowed Ginobili in the head, and the whistle didn't blow for anything. Ginobili's laying there on the ground, hurt, and, and nothing was called. And then the Spurs ended up getting the steal and ended up uh, having a chance to win that game, but they didn't, and a lot of people are going to point uh, to that rule because 
you can't touch somebody when you're inbounding the ball. I mean, that's like one of the most important rules. You can't touch anybody when you're inbounding the ball. And he went over the line and elbowed Manu Ginobili in the face so he could get the ball out. And you can't do that. <laughs> Obviously, you can't do that. No, I mean, there's always going to be subpar officiating, blown calls, except things that are that obvious can't really happen. I mean, I mean that that's I mean that's something that really turned that series around or kind of defined that series. Yeah. Because when uh, was it Game Six was in Oklahoma City, that could have been three two. San Antonio trying to clinch in that game. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I felt bad that the Spurs lost because I do like the Spurs too, but I like the Thunder more overall, I guess. Uh, so, I mean, I was, I was happy that they were able to dethrone the Spurs, and of course, we don't know what's going to happen with the Spurs now this off season. Uh, there could be a lot of changes. Who knows if Tim Duncan will retire? Who knows if Manu Ginobili will retire? And you know, they still have a good team, but they, I don't think it'll be nearly as good as it has been the last over a decade i mean it's you keep thinking that every year that you know next season will be the one that their age starts to wear down on them and it never seems to happen right i, I think we are going to see it next year um I, i'm not saying they won't make the playoffs but i mean it does help that they do have a young lamarcus aldridge yeah well young enough i mean he's not as young as you would like but yeah he's he's, he's, he's a young pup compared to the dinosaurs on that well team. yeah yeah it's more of you know Kawhi leonard sort of leading the way um I, i'm not sure if Kawhi leonard can be uh you know the the first and front leader of the team but it does help that they have lamarcus aldridge obviously mm -hmm. then you still got the veteran presence of tony parker tim duncan manu ginobili yeah, well, I mean, we'll have to see where that goes. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I think you're going to see a little bit of a decline uh, next year, meaning they won't be like, uh, you know, the number – I forget what seed they were uh, this past year, but I, I don't think you're going to see them. They be, were the two seed. Uh, okay, they were the two. I, I don't think they'll be the two seed next year. I think they probably fall into that four, five, six range. Um, but of course, we'll it, see. One it's thing, too early yeah. for that. No, but, yeah, obviously, you need to see what happens in the off season. Then the thing you have to factor in is just they they have such a great coach in Greg Popovich. Right, right. Uh, yeah, he's always able to figure it out. I mean, he managed his time the best out of anybody in the NBA. He knows how to manage his players, manage his, uh, uh, how many minutes they play, so they don't get hurt and so they don't get uh, so they don't get worn out. And uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting. Uh, the, the other team in the West that I think. Uh, and I hope makes a lot of noise this year as the Minnesota Timberwolves. Now that they got Tom Thibodeau, I think they could. I I'm hoping that they make the playoffs and have a nice run and have a good future ahead of them because that would just be a big f u to the Bulls. And honestly, they kind of deserve it. And, yeah, they do. <laughs> well, yeah, and there's a former Bull hitting free agency that uh, wants to go to the Timberwolves. And, I heard about uh, yep, that. We're going to discuss a little more of that after this a quick update in a little bit, and we'll talk about that a little. More because I, you know, obviously the Timberwolves are one of those teams that are on the rise. You know, you got you get one of the best coaches in the NBA to coach some young talent that badly needed a coach. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, they they definitely needed a coach and sort of a change of everything. And uh, they got a lot of good young talent, of course. And they've got a lot of. Uh, a lot of good things, and yeah, uh, uh, it, it'll be very exciting if the Timberwolves can be competitive, of course. Um, yeah, but I mean, who knows if Joe Kim Noah goes there. We'll talk about that quickly after an update right now, and then we will talk about Joe Kim Noah. And don't forget, our final segment will be coming up after that on Sports Renegade, sportstownchicago.com. We've got a couple minutes to talk to you before a break, and what we'd like to talk about is Joe Kim Noah and would he be a good fit for the Minnesota Timberwolves? Um, he probably wouldn't start on that team. He would come off the bench, which he was not okay with with the Bulls after it came out when Fred Hoiberg lied to the media and said that he was okay with it, and then it turned out that he wasn't, and he always wanted to be the starting center. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it would be a good fit if he was a role player. If he's looking to start, I, I don't think Minnesota is the place for him. Right. Except, I mean, as a role player, he knows Tom Thibodeau. He was the defensive player of the year in Tom Thibodeau's system. I think it would be a great fit whether he's starting or coming off the bench, and I think he might be more okay with coming off the bench if he's playing for his old coach. Yeah, and and, and we know they 
that they all got along great. So, mm-hmm. and, and obviously he'd bring a very good defensive presence to the Timberwolves, and he'd probably be playing uh, ve- pretty solid minutes for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would definitely think so. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that could be a very good young team. I mean, that that really could be... Uh, I mean, there's certainly a team on the rise. When you look at other teams in the West, there's not a team like Minnesota that you can say, like, that team is going to be good next year or that team is going to be good in a few years. Um, And that's what happens when you you do a great job of drafting and then you hire a good coach. Right, because if you look at the other bad teams in the West, those teams are nowhere close to being good. Sacramento, nowhere close. Uh, The Denver Nuggets, nowhere close, really. Um... Uh, Houston and Dallas just sort of, you know, always are about the same. Make the playoffs, don't make the playoffs, but never right. Play. You know, they they don't have like that much young talent. They Phoenix of... is nowhere close. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, and like you said, there's no young talent on those teams. No, not like any that you'd see a bright future. It's kind of like it's getting towards the end of something. There, kind of like uh, what happened with the Cubs, you know, in the 2010 to. Uh, 2011 where they kept trying to say they would be good except you knew they weren't going to be good it's just a bunch of old players yeah and when you look at the NBA as a whole I think you know um, if you look at every team the Western Conference is on a little bit of a decline and the Eastern Conference is on a little bit of a rise yeah they're on a little bit of a rise except the only problem is it's not it's just the teams are getting a little better it's not like any young superstars are uh, emerging. I mean, I know Toronto played very well in the playoffs. Yeah, well, they got a great backcourt with DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, um, but they're not the best backcourt in the NBA, and they never will be. Um, the The problem is, uh, yeah, you have the Cavaliers that are good, and the Celtics are certainly on the rise, and they they look to be a very good team for years right. to come. And as you said, they have the number three pick, which they, they could have the use, number three pick, which they could use to bring in a superstar like Jimmy Butler. They could use. That in a trade potentially, it's possible. I mean, they, they literally could be like one big move away from really being a huge threat in that conference. Yeah, I, I know they were interested in Jimmy Butler. If they could somehow uh, trade for Jimmy Butler, yeah, I'm sure they'd have to give up the number three pick to the Bulls. But um, you know, if they would do that, otherwise, there's some good college talent uh, that could go number three. Um, there's, uh, you know, a, a couple people, um, of course on the national championship team on Villanova, most of them came back for their senior year, which is just outstanding. I love when people do that, but, um, it, it, it's, uh, I think there's some, some good players in college basketball and, uh, you know, with the number three pick, you, you could get a pretty good player, maybe Ben Simmons from LSU. I don't know if he's going to go number one. Um, I'm not a big fan of him necessarily, but if he's going at, at number three, I think that's a better deal. Um, and, you know, Toronto is good, obviously. Uh, Miami sort of has a nice young core around Dwayne Wade, so they could be pretty good. Um, Atlanta will always be Atlanta. Um, and Indiana, you know, is still not a bad team. I think it was kind of dumb for them to fire Frank Vogel, and I think that was a great hire by Orlando. He's with Orlando now, isn't he? He is. That yeah. was a great hire. Uh, yeah, I, I I thought that was a great hire, especially when Scott Skiles said he was out. I'm I'm sick of Scott Skiles anyway. I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I I think Orlando is another team that's on the rise for sure. Uh, so you know, there's some good teams, and that and what that means is the the Bulls uh, clock is ticking for the Bulls to to do something. Um, you know, are they going to be one of those teams that's competitive, or are they going to be in a rebuild like Orlando was a few years ago, like Milwaukee is, like uh, you know, some of these other teams were like the Celtics were a few years ago. Um, you know, are they going to do that? Or are they going to be like they probably will be like the White Sox, you know, add a couple pieces, say that they're still competitive, say all the right things, and then do all the wrong things? Yeah, you never know. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back to discuss more NBA and then the Stanley Cup finals. Yes. So you're listening to the Sports Renegades on SportstownChicago.com. The Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com.